and then we run through that hook. And then, I don't know if I can get this very clear or not, but we run through that uh, cable tie right there. So what I'm going to do is, I have a paint pen, I'm going to mark that uh, position on the cable, and I'm going to mark that position on the cable, and uh, then when I put the new cable in, hopefully it'll be in about the right place when I replace everything. And then I should just be able to kind of fish the cable from the car out out of the car once all once the shift cables are sitting on the floor. It was uh, pretty easy to get the cables out. Um, I cut that zip tie uh, under the bracket under the the uh, kind of mid stiffener plate and fished. Like I said, I fished the cables out from the cabin. There's a a uh, foam piece that uh, the cables run through. I'll show you. You can kind of see it right there, the foam piece that the cables run through to get from the cabin to the outside of the car. Right there. The cables from this view, so we're looking at the back, oops. We're looking at the back of the car. The cables come through the right side, so uh, we just have to make sure where they do the same thing as they as they exit, and they run below the brake cable, or, or against the body of the car, I should say. The old cables are out of the car. Uh, I snaked the new cables in. I'll take a picture from underneath. So. Uh, there we can see I, there's a piece of foam in the hole that attaches or that links the outside to the inside of the car. Focus on that. There we go. Um, I pulled the foam out and snaked the cables through. There's no way to get the uh, cables in with the big uh, um, collars on them without taking that foam out. So I'll put the foam back in once uh, everything is in place. Uh, and then I just pushed the cables up through the back of the engine bay. You can see them sticking out right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, see if I can get the cables linked to the transmission. Um, what uh, I'll probably, I think what I'm going to do, just so I can get a little better access, is put the car, the back of the car back down on the floor. So I can reach into the engine bay more easily and then uh, see if I can get the cables onto the posts on the transmission. After a little fighting, I got the cables into the cable guide and the cable uh, rod ends are on the transmission shift. To get the cables into the guide, you have to um, put the, the far end of the cable into the guide and then slide it forward to get around the collar. Um, on the shift cable, there's a boot. I don't know if that's enough light. There's a boot on the end of it. They have to release to get it uh, through the, um, the, the uh, bracket. And then you have to pull the boot back up over the collar after it's in. So that's what I'm working on now. And then the other thing I have to do is figure out how I can get the uh, R clips in because I've got the cables on the posts, the eyelets on the posts, but I don't have the R clips in yet. And then I'm going to put the C clips back in and then this should be done. I bought some bigger R clips at the hardware store. Same gauge, uh, stainless steel. Maybe they'll be easier to get in. Uh, hopefully they don't interfere with anything. So I'm going to give the bigger ones a try and see if they work, and if not, I'll uh, work on the little ones. I've got the uh, shift uh, uh, ends, rod ends, tied down. It's kind of really hard to see. Um, the trick that I, uh, well, not trick, the method I use is I reached in behind the intake tube and reached down to grab the... Uh, 
the R clips, shift the, um, you put the eyelets on the shift uh, uh, post and then shift so that the mechanism goes forward. It's easier to reach the little R clip. So that's a little trick. So the transmission is attached at this end. Time to go on to the inside of the car. I've got the cable tie tied up to its little uh, bracket loosely. And then the other thing I did is uh, I moved the hanger for the shift cables. This is a suggestion by Anno Kinetic. It used to be on this bolt. And so I loosened it off this bolt, tightened it onto this bolt, and the, the cables just don't have to ride up as high when they get in. And then I'll put this bracket on. I don't know which, I'll have to look at the video and see which side of this bolt these cables run on. And then uh, and stuff the foam back in that hole. And uh, then I should be done with routing the cables outside the car and then on to the inside. I'm doing some assembly of the shift mechanism. Uh, this is the cross gate assembly the reverse lockout cable, and there's a bracket here, and uh, you know, Kinetic has you put all put those three assemblies together. You can kind of see when I pull on this end of the cable, it releases this little lever, and the lockout. This is the uh, cross gate, so it moves, and so when you pull on the the uh, lockout it moves out of the way and allows the cross gate to go into reverse. Pretty slick, very different from uh, the way Lotus did it, so that's cool. Next set of instructions is just to loosely fit the shift uh, mechanism in place. Uh, make sure that the cable, the throttle cable and the wire harness are there's some movement around, so they suggest to put something down underneath to avoid any uh, scratching. It looks like they made a modification since they did the instructions. It used to be that there were two screws here that you would screw in. Then this bracket would get under the screws and um, then you tighten it down here afterwards onto the base. Uh, now it's just slot and tabs. And this is the space that the uh, cable harness and throttle cable run through. So I'm going to do that now. There is definitely a little fiddling to get that in there. Um, in the picture they have the, ca the throttle cable up in this corner and the um, cable harness kind of pushed over the side. What I did is I put the bolts into the chassis and then um, put those together so it'll be in about the right place. Um, next thing is to install the cross gate assembly to this assembly. Looks like things are coming together. The I, I just installed the cross gate assembly onto the base. There's a couple of screws in the bottom that you put a little Loctite on and screw those in. Now I'm installing, I put the lift tube down, now I'm installing the uh, lockout cable. So one nut goes below the bracket, one nut goes above the bracket, and both of these little nuts go above this hole. So that's next step. The reverse lockout is a little tricky to adjust. So uh, what happens is, I kind of showed it earlier, there's this cable with the uh, little cable that pulls up, pulls on the little reverse lockout guy, but if you pull too far, it pulls the cable out of that little reverse lockout guy. See, there's just these little tiny nuts up here that have to be adjusted so that there's no slack. And you can see that pulls it out of the way. I'm gonna put the shift knob on and maybe that will make it so that the collar doesn't pull up too far and pull the uh, cable out of the reverse lockout. So we'll give that a shot, make sure it's working. Think that I've got this appropriate. So there's a set screw in this collar that moves that that uh, sets the rest spot for the for the reverse lockout collar. 
And when I pull this all the way up into the shift knob, you can see I get a full release for the reverse lockout, but uh, it does not pull it too far. These little tiny nuts on this thing. Gotta keep track of those guys. And then the height of this guy adjusts the tension on the reverse lockout mechanism. So you have to play with this height, this space, and this space. And I think I've got it all worked out now. Now it's time to install, uh, actually, attach the shift mechanism to the floor. So one, two, three, four bolts. This bracket goes on underneath because I'm going to install the uh, console cover. Four bolts to screw down. One, two, three, and one under the cable harness for it. That's it for this guy. I don't have the shifter reinforcer because I don't didn't want to uh, drill holes under the chassis. Shifter, reverse lockout, feels really, really good. So uh, on to the next. We're getting the handbrake mechanism ready now. So there's uh, this this panel. The spacer gets screwed on, the little uh, switch gets screwed on, and now uh, this, I'm going to start to bolt things up here and, and then attach the handbrake. So um, I'm going to need two hands, so I will come back when I've got stuff kind of assembled. Handbrake uh, cable is attached right here, uh, it has to go underneath this, and then there are little wa there are big washers, fat washers between the screw on this piece and the. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see them. Yeah, you can kind of see that washer in there. There's two of those. I think I ran into a snag with my console mounting bracket. Uh, if I look at the location of these holes in the chassis relative to the holes that attach the bracket. Uh, these holes are in front of these holes, which is the way it is on the standard bracket. These are the holes that mount to the chassis. These are the holes that mount to the plastic console cover. However, the screws are not lined up. So if I line up the bracket locations here and here, see how those screws aren't lined up. If I reverse it, screws are lined up, but these holes are in the wrong place. Uh, I think what happened is they bent this piece in the wrong direction. Uh, so I'm going to take some pictures, send them to InnoKinetic, see if I'm right. I could uh, re-drill these holes, I suppose, and get everything in the correct location. But I want to make sure that this is the way it's intended to be. I'm going to keep uh, assembling everything because I can actually put this in after uh, but I do want to get to the point where I can get the all the shift cables installed and adjusted so I might keep going things are coming together here's the shift cable the shift uh, block is screwed onto the other side and the cables are here. We're not quite attached yet, but we're getting there. The other side of the shift console is on. I'm having some problems. Everything seems to be lined up okay except those holes. So those are the holes that the seat mounts to and they're not lined up. Uh, so I'm probably going to have to open those up, I'm assuming. I've got the uh, base loosened up. Um, so I can kind of try and shift it, but it, it, it just doesn't have any motion forward or, or, or backward, and it doesn't have to do with the uh, um, cable harness, because there's a little play in it. It's, it, it's just not going to slide any farther forward, uh, unfortunately. I think the next step uh, is going to be 
attaching the shift cables. I'm going to uh, get in touch with uh, InnoKinetic about this, as well as the front uh, the bracket that attaches the cover. So the cables are tied down at the underneath the car. Um, everything is hooked up here. I've got all the cable ends uh, tied down tight. The parking brake seems to be working pretty good. Let me give some impressions uh, what I think. So overall, uh, the the, the uh, design is much nicer than the stock design. I mean, it's not sheet metal parts and and not a big, big sheet metal uh, uh, bowl, which is kind of nice. Um, the OEM design, though, is one piece, and so that makes it a lot less fiddly to assemble. You kind of just set the set the cables down, set the OEM thing in, and, and set the shift cables in, and it's all kind of uh, made for assemblability. This guy is definitely made uh, to put together in pieces once it's on the car. It's a lot more complicated to assemble. Um, I, the, the aluminum is really nice. Uh, the sheet metal parts, like that bracket, that doesn't fit uh, that I'm going have to have to work on for attaching the plastic cover. That's sharp. There's burrs on it. So I think that the sheet metal parts probably could stand to be deburred. Um, this one's okay, but, but that part needed to be deburred. The big question is what does the shift feel like? Um, here's, here's the shifting. There's still the same amount of play in gears. There's actually, for some reason, it seems like the 3rd, 4th, and the 5th, 6th uh, gate, I, uh, they seem actually a little closer together to me, and there seems like a little more slop in the 5th, 6th gate than there was before. That's not going to be the, you know, kinetic, that's going to be the SSC cables. Uh, the, you know, kinetic, I mean, you can see that all of that play is is just it's not in the shift mechanism because the cables are are moving there's no play between the cables and the mechanism so maybe it's there's some some uh something going on at the back uh mechanism i don't i don't know um overall my impression of the shifts is it's 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 about the same these cables, I believe, are higher quality, so they probably won't be pulling out like we've seen with the stock cables on some cars um, over time. Uh, this will probably last longer. Uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the reverse lockout collar, and only because I think it's going to rattle. It, it doesn't, the nice thing with the stock collar is it actually has a plastic liner, so there's uh, a little uh, rattling insulation between the lever and the collar, and here there isn't. It finds reverse just fine, and the lockout actually works works just fine. Here's, um, and I'm not going to have any problems finding gears. I mean, it's, 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 it's very positive in, in gear engagement. Um, but I do think this thing's probably going to rattle a little, so I'll probably try and pad, uh, add some padding between the collar and the, sh and the reverse lockout collar just to keep it from, from making this noise. Um, so the, the whole thing, uh, the Shift R111 and the, and the SSC cables, was about $1,700. Um, by the way, if you want to get SSC cables, order them right now anyway, order them from uh, SSC directly. Uh, the Australian dollar is pretty weak, and so this that only the cables I saved about a hundred bucks by ordering them from Australia, and it I think it took four days to get them, so it was pretty fast, maybe five. Uh, but anyway, for seventeen hundred bucks, I really don't see a difference here. 
Um, like, like I mentioned early, my mechanism was in pretty good shape. My car is really low miles. I only have 8,400 miles on the car. So, so there isn't a, a lot of wear on it yet. The shifter is definitely straight up and down, uh, which is different from the way it was. I'm not going to have any problems with, with clearance with my legs, I don't think. The seats aren't in it right now. But uh, I didn't have a problem before. It'll keep me from touching uh, my passenger, which is kind of nice. It's actually a position I wanted the shifter to be in before, so, so I do get that. Um, so, so what do I think? It's a nice mechanism. It's a nice setup. If, if uh, you're experiencing some, a lot of play in the mechanism, stock, this is, a, this is a nice upgrade. It seems to be pretty stiff. I don't see much play. I do see the cross gate moving a little bit when I move the shifter back and forth. I don't know if that shows up on camera. Um, but, but the base is definitely solid and it's not rocking around like the stock one does. Um, so, so that's a nice thing. By the way, if your uh, stock uh, uh, mechanism is loose, y you can take the cover off and pretty much move things around and see if you move something and the cable doesn't move, you know that there's some play there. Um, this obviously does not have any play. So, uh, so overall, you know, it, it's, it's nice. It's a nice thing, a uh, nice mechanism. It's uh, probably not necessary if you're, if you're uh, stock gears or, or your stock shifter is working and in good order and if you're pretty happy with it it's probably not worth the upgrade uh, in fact I don't know that the cables are even worth the upgrade if everything's working okay um, but uh, uh, it will last longer I think it's more robust and uh, so oh, uh, I, I did want to make a couple of comments on um, cable location and clearance. There's a lot less clearance between the parking brake uh, assembly and the shift cable, so it doesn't really show up in this picture, but the parking brake um, latch, the, the, the pin that the parking brake goes through, is now right up against the shift cable, and I, I hope it's not, I'm not going to get any chafing um, between the shift cable and, and that uh, snap snap pin on the parking brake. It seems like there's a little clearance, but it's pretty small. Um, so that's something to, that I'm going to have to keep an eye out for. Um, otherwise, uh, this is the install is probably I don't know for difficulty. It, it's not engine work, that's for sure, but it's definitely more complicated than replacing shocks or something. So some somewhere in between. Uh, maybe 7 out of 10 or 6 out of 10, something like that.